The A320, the culmination of modern technology, its elegant wing design, its smooth fuselage and its breathtaking ingenuity, the pinnacle of modern Airbus narrow bodies. Because it's so modern, it can be easy to forget that this plane is already three and a half decades old. Throughout its long, successful existence, the plane has changed the aviation industry and it will continue to do so in future. But today, let's take a moment to reflect on the history of this magnificent aircraft. Hello and welcome to Aero Knowledge, your home for everything aviation. If you're new here, welcome and I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please consider subscribing. But enough from me, let's get on with the video. American Delta, United, British Airways, Lufthansa and Qatar, Etihad, Air India, Philippine Airlines, China Southern or Qantas. Chances are you've heard of at least one of these airlines. One uniting fact about all these airlines is that they all operate the A320. The very first operator of the A320 was Air France in 1988. They took delivery of the plane on the 26th of March and began revenue service with the plane in April of the same year. The A320 was born out of a need for more European competition against single-aisle aircraft such as the DC-9 and 737. Research and development of the A320 began in June 1977. British Aerospace, Aerospatiale Dornier and a Dutch aircraft manufacturer established a joint European transport or jet program. The project was considered a forerunner of the A320. The plane was designed to carry 130 to 188 passengers and the plane would fly at a cruising speed of Mach 0.84, which was faster than the Boeing 737. The plane would be powered by two CFM 56 engines. One interesting thing about these engines is that they are still used today on the A320 as well as on the Boeing 737. This program was later transferred to Airbus in 1980, which resulted in the creation of the single aisle studies. These studies looked at three different variants of aircraft that were in the 125 to 180 seat range. They were designated as SA-1, SA-2 and SA-3. These aircraft would later go on to be the A319, A320 and A321 respectively. In 1981, the project was renamed to the A320 project and engineers focused on the design which had been previously called SA2. In 1984, the program cost was estimated to be £2 billion, which is £7 billion or almost US$8 billion US dollars today. The program was officially launched in 1984 with an initial 96 orders. Air France was the first customer with 25 orders with options for 25 more aircraft. The A320 was rolled out at the factory for the first time on the 14th of February 1987. The A320 then had its maiden flight which lasted for 3 hours and 23 minutes on the 22nd of February. After 10 years of development and hard work, Airbus teams decided to start creating variants of the A320. First came the A321 which was based on the previously mentioned SA3 study. The A321 would be almost 7 meters longer than the A320 which would allow it to accommodate more passengers. The first of the A321s were delivered to Lufthansa on the 27th of January 1994. The first time that the A320 would be shrunk was when the A319 concept came about. The aircraft was based on the SA1 research study and was to be a 130 to 140 seat aircraft. It was to be a competitor of the Boeing 737-700. The aircraft lengths were reduced by roughly 4 metres, which resulted in a drop of from 4 emergency exits to 2. The project was officially launched in 1993 and the aircraft entered into commercial service with Swiss Air in 1996. The A320 was later shrunk again in the late 90s with the release of the A318. The A318 was first delivered to Frontier in 2003. An interesting fact about the A320 family is that it is the best-selling series of narrow-body aircraft. Another interesting thing to note about the A320 is that it had a revolutionary fly-by-wire system. Fly-by-wire is a system that uses computers to process control inputs made by the pilots or by the autopilot. Another thing to note about the A320 was that it was the first airliner to be equipped with a glass cockpit. This, plus the revolutionary fly-by-wire system, really made this plane ahead of its time. Airbus is now one of the dominant players in airplane manufacturing, along with Boeing. In more recent years, the A320 shook the aviation industry with the release of the A320neo. Neo stands for New Engine Option. These engines make the plane incredibly efficient. 
This prompted Boeing to create the 737 MAX. This was a rush response to the A320 Neo, which sadly resulted in two fatal incidents. The A320 Neo has truly shaped the modern narrow-body world. Aside from the Neo, the A321 has some other variants. The A321 also has an LR variant. LR stands for long range. This model has an increased range over the original A321. There is also a future variant to come, which is the A321 XLR. XLR means extra long range, which as the name suggests, has an extra long range over the A321. This model was supposed to hit the market in 2022. However, because of recent events such as the COVID-19 pandemic and the Russian invasion of Ukraine, it has been delayed by quite a few years. This program, the A321 XLR, has been desperately needed in the aviation industry, as the A321 XLR is the closest aircraft to being a middle-of-the-market plane. Other planes, like the 757, are no longer being produced and airlines desperately need a middle-of-the-market plane. Many airlines are either saving their old 757s or they are purchasing brand new A321s and A321 LRs. But what airlines are really waiting for is the A321 XLR. This shows how desperately needed Airbus is in the aviation industry and how once again the magnificent A320 family of aircraft is the solution. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new. But unfortunately that is it for today. Aero knowledge over and out.